Hi, um, today I'm going to talk about how to do logistic regression in R using gradient descent. So uh, first of all, let's take a look at the data here. So I'm going to use uh, these variables as my predictor to predict the direction here. So this variable, this is actually a categorical variable, which I only have up and down two categories here. So that is why uh, when I do the logistic regression by calling the GLM function, I'm using the family equal to binomial. That means it's either, either equal to up or down, or it's either equal to uh, 1 and 0. So, uh, so in R, you can easily uh, to do the logistic regression uh, by running the GLM function here. So basically, just uh, given a data and then you calculate um, whether uh, the, the data is falling to under the first category or the other category. So basically, that is uh, logistic regression. So now I'm going to talk about how uh, you can do it, how to do logistic regression by hand. And now I'm going to talk about the setting for the logistic regression. So first of all, um, logistic regression is something like this. It's uh, using the sigma function. So um, so the sigma wave function is uh, is basically uh, like an S curve. So when you have a positive value, and it is going to approach to one. When you have a very large negative or very negative number, then it's going to approach to zero. So that is uh, either giving you one or zero, like giving you one of the two options here. So um, so for example, when y equal to one, I'm just uh, it's just equal to one, uh, the sigma function, and, and I mean the probability of the, of the data is e equal is fall into the first category. It's just the sigma function, and uh, then the probability of uh, of the, of the data that is fall into another category just one minus the sigma, because uh, when you have a when you have a very uh, negative value, it will give you a number that is close to zero. But the probability just one minus that one minus a very small number, so that means it is very likely that the data is falling to the other category. So that's why you do the one minus sigma function. So when you combine um, the two uh, situation into one function, basically you just uh, take the uh, y as exponent, expo ex exponent. So basically, when y equal to one, uh, you activate this part, but one minus one is equal to zero. So this entire uh, term here become one, and when y equal to zero, this entire term become one, and one minus zero equal, equal to one. So you are activating this part of the function. So it's uh, when you so again, when y when is first category, you activate this part, and when is the second category as zero, then you activate this part here. So when you do the combination and when you multiply them together, it will take care of both. Uh, uh, the two situation here. So now I'm going to to create my loss function here. So uh, first of all, I'm 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 going to uh, I'm going to use the the likelihood function here. So basically, I'm just going to multiply from one to n for all my observation, multiplying my probability together. So uh, basically, likelihood likelihood is something like uh, uh, that uh, you. Uh, so, for example, when you do maximum likelihood, and then when you get get uh, that uh, coefficient, that means uh, you are you are able to generate um, the data uh, the, the data using your coefficient uh, that is very uh, very close to what you observe in reality. So, so that's why we we uh, maximum likelihood uh, method is just uh, to help you to. To, to generate something that is very likely, very close to what you observe. So that is uh, what the likelihood uh, means here. So the greater the likelihood, that means the closer to, to, your, to, your, to your observed data. So that will give you a set of coefficient um, as, as, a, as, a, as a model. Okay. So now I'm going to put a negative sign in front of the in front of the my likelihood function. So uh, so so to get the better coefficient, we want to maximize the likelihood. 
or when we put the negative function there, we want to minimize the likely the lo the likelihood function. So uh, so that can serve as a loss function here. Over there. And I also put a also we, when we do the maximize or the minimize, we always want to put the we always want to use the log likelihood. That is just to make sure that we bring the bring the the, the power term in front of in front of the log, make it as a as a multiplication. So that would make our computation easier by bringing by by removing the power into a uh, into a multiply. So that's why we take the log function here. Okay. So this will serve as my loss function for the for for my um, logistic regression. Okay. So in order to minimize the loss function, we are going to use the gradient descent method. So here, so uh, so in order to use the gradient descent, we need to take the derivative of the loss function with respect to our um, coefficient. So just to make it simpler for explanation, I'm going to rewrite the sigmoid function here as h here. So so here uh, I'm just writing rewrite my log negative log likelihood uh, in terms of h just to make it shorter. And now I'm going to take the derivative of my log negative log likelihood with respect to uh, the coefficient here. Uh, uh, coefficient, which I denote as w here. So basically, it's just uh, yi multiplied by h prime divided by h. So, uh, so this is uh, come from the chain rule. So uh, h is a function of w. Uh, as I as, uh, so when you take the derivative of log h, uh, which becomes one over h. And h is also a function of w, so you have the h prime here. And then over here, you also have uh, 1 minus yi multiplied by log 1. So the derivative of the log term here will give you 1 over 1 minus h. And this part is also a function of w, so it will give you a h prime. And you have a negative sign here. So, uh, so that's why uh, this here, it becomes neg negative. You minus 1. Uh, the this term here, okay. So uh, and uh, y uh, y prime is also equal to h multiplied by one of one minus h multiplied by x i. So this is the part. Um, uh, it is true for for this, and I hope you can try to uh, also also derive it by hand to verify um, this part here. So basically, just uh, um, so uh, take the so basically just uh, take the derivative of the sigmoid function with respect to w, and then uh, you will need to use the chain rule for the de division uh, for the derivative, and also uh, and then you can factorize uh, out the the h here, and then you will left with one over h, and since uh your h here is also a function with w so that's why uh, when you take derivative you're also pulling the xi uh, out from this h so uh, so this is the derivative of the sigmoid function with respect to the coefficient so uh, try to calculate this by hand to verify this part so I'm not going to uh, explain in detail for, for this uh, uh, equation here okay so now when I substitute h prime into my into my uh, gradient, which is the derivative of my, so this is the, der the derivative of the loss loss function, and this is the derivative of the sigmoid function. So when I substitute the h prime into my my gradient, I will get a function uh, uh, like this. Okay, and uh, when you expand um, when you expand um, 1 minus h and then uh, this part multiply by multiply everything out together and then take take care of the negative sign here and then this will be the gradient for my uh, for for the loss function here okay so now I'm going to uh, so now I'm going to calculate um, to calculate the coefficient for the logistic regression using gradient descent now I'm going to run data and here, um, 
since when you read the data in R, it's very likely that uh, the function will, will keep for two categories, it's very likely that it will return either one or two. So, but uh, for our, uh, for our, uh, in order to calculate it by hand, uh, I'm, I'm just going to change it for, uh, for one category that is equal to one and the second category is just equal to zero. So now I'm just changing one, two, to zero and one. This is just uh, 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 for uh, notation purpose. Uh, but uh, either way, you you are just still getting um, two categories in your in your dependent variables. So now I need to create a function called the sigmoid function, and then get the coefficient by running uh, by uh, by initialize uh, uh, random numbers here, and then now I'm going to just update it once to make a, um, to make these two number difference. Okay. So now I'm just going to run my gradient descent. By uh, by running this while loop, it might take a while, or it might not even converge. It just depends on your uh, on on your initial value, and uh, and your learning rates here. Okay, so now I'm just going to stop the, the while loop. Okay, so so now I have my uh, w one as my latest update, as my coefficient for the logistic regression using gradient descent. And uh, here, I already run the I already run the logistic regression using the built-in function in R. So, uh, so now let's take a look uh, uh, what the coefficient that the function uh, returns. So, uh, this is the, the 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 number that is calculated by R using the built-in function in R. So now let's take a look. Um, okay. So it seems like, uh, let me try it again. So it seems like, uh, it seems like the data is not converging here. So my gradient descent, it seems like, uh, um, it is not, um, it is not giving me the minimum of the loss function here. So now let me run it again, or or uh, or, or um, give it a um, make the let the data let R run it for longer time to see if it, if it can minimize the loss function here. Okay. So now let's compare. Oh, okay. So as you can see that, it, uh, so maybe maybe uh, at the first time I didn't uh, the data didn't converge or maybe it just it's not yet in the, in the, in the range for it to minimize in the in the minimum region so for my second time I let it run it longer and then uh, it seems like the data convert um, the coefficient converge and then um, and then it's almost so well you can tell that it's reaching the minimum since uh, the data is uh, are matching here so this is the coefficient that is that is get um, from the built-in function in R, and this is the coefficient that I calculated by hand. So as you can see, that they are very they are they are almost matching. So only so um, so it is uh, there's only like a, a different uh, in the um, after a few decimal point, but they are very they are almost very. Uh, Match, um, they are almost um, identical to each other. So that means we are get we are getting the minimum of the loss function, and this is the solution for a coefficient. So you can so you can see that um, well uh, so basically all the building function they, they, um, uh, you are able to replicate uh, 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 as long as you know the algorithm here. So um, so now I'm just going to use my uh, use my use uh, to calculate by hand to validate um, the, the, the built-in function R. So this is how you calculate the coefficient for a logistic regression using gradient descent in R. So um, thank you very much and let me know if you have any questions.